Hi, this is Bruce Himmelblau with Blue Sky Video Productions. Are you delivering the ultimate customer experience? And is, is your business truly distinct from your competition? Well, today's guest is the legendary, iconic Scott McCain, who is also the Hall of Fame speaker uh, and member of the Sales and Business Hall of Fame. And it's amazing. We've actually known each other for a while, but this is actually our first face to face since we first met. So, bringing on Scott. So, how you doing, Bruce? I'm great. Yes, it's hard to believe it. I, we, you know, we were talking to seven years. Holy cow! I, I, where does it go? It's just, it's just incredible. So, I'm, I'm really happy to be face to face with you again, and, and, and thank you for having me here today. Yeah, I feel like I should be playing some John Mellencamp music as you as you as I bring you on stage. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, but I think we get flagged by YouTube. Yeah, we would, we would. As a matter of fact, it, it's it's funny you mentioned that. I just went through something where a, a friend of mine is in a country band, Diamond Rio, and I, I played uh, on a, on a live stream one of their songs while he was the guest on my live stream. And YouTube pulled it down and threatened to cancel my account and everything else. And I'm like, the guy in the band was on the show. Doesn't matter. They they don't care. So I I totally understand. But you've had had your start in a small town, based on that song. Yeah, yeah. Crothersville, Indiana is 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 my hometown. I, I was born in Seymour, which is where the hospital is in our county, and so. Seymour is the is the, the literally the small town that John is from and and, and sings about, and uh, John is a few years older than I am, but uh, he was getting his start in music and he played all of our high school dances and and uh, the, he you know I grew up with him basically. And uh, matter of fact, I don't on on the live stream that I do uh, every day you. you will, quite often see his dad making a, a comment wow. because his, his dad watches the show every day. But, uh, you know, John, John's had such an incredible career and now in the rock and roll hall of fame. And, and, uh, it's, it's, it's really something, it's kind of a neat thing to say, you know, the small town I was born in is the same small town that he sings when he sings born in a small town. Bruce, I've, I've never really told this that, to, to you before, but the, the other incredible thing is it, in my high school scrapbook, I, I've, got where I attended a, a basketball game where the opponent was Springs Valley High School. And then it said, Crepe Soul, dance after game. Well, mm -hmm. Mellencamp was the lead singer of Crepe Soul. But the star of the Springs Valley High School basketball team was Larry Bird, which meant that wow. Larry Bird played in the ball game. Mellencamp played the dance afterwards. I wonder what I could have gotten for that ticket about 10 years later. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, you were there too, so you. Uh, yeah, I'm I mean, the failure of the group. You know that that, that was the incredible. Did you see the or at least MC the, uh, the the dance or something like that? Yeah. Well, you know that was the incredible thing. I, I, I look back now. For example, the golf tournament that weekend, the high school golf tournament, was won by a guy named Frank Zeller, which doesn't mean much until you hear his nickname, Fuzzy, uh, who won the Masters in the U.S. Open later in his life. We'd go home and watch uh, on the weekends. We'd watch Dave Letterman do the weather on the local station and. Diane Sawyer was on another station that we saw. Jane Pauley was doing the local news. So it was just an incredible, uh, you know, confluence of, of people and times. And, and I, I can't help but think that, uh, you know, as, as, as younger than they were, but being influenced by what you see and what you hear, that, that it may have influenced me somewhere along the way as well. Not to their level of success, but I've, I've, I've been so blessed and so fortunate. Yeah, I went to a small high school here, uh, just north of Chicago. Uh, we had a couple wannabes, uh, Rock Hudson, Charlton Heston, and Margaret, go to my high school. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. I, I wonder whatever became of them, right? Did they do okay after they left? Yeah, I think they did just yeah. fine. Right? <laughs> but um, also, the, the town really loves you. What does US 31 mean to you? Well, they uh, have talked about and and it's been in the paper that they uh, are going to, you know, name it, uh, name the street after me that goes through Crothersville. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's an honor that they would even talk about that and say that they were going to do it. So it's, uh, you know, it, it's uh, the, the one thing I thought that I've, I've got a, a buddy who mischievously said, you know, I really ought to move back to Crothersville and that, what a great address to say that, you know, Scott McCain's at one McCain way and also just speed up and down the road, daring them to arrest me on the street that had my name on it for speeding. But, I don't think that's 
<laughs> that's not going to happen. <laughs> so the conversation here is like all business is still show business. Yeah. And there is a clip I, I pulled from your uh, mm -hmm. YouTube channel and is basically introducing the concept at uh, all business should be show business. So I'm going to oh, play that real quick. Okay, thank you. Harvard recently wrote that the corporation now is primarily a stage upon which you showcase for your customers and your employees and your prospects. So if I'm doing business with you, <laughs> how's the show? What type of experience are you creating for your customers and how are you helping them create experiences that are absolutely amazing? In my first book, All Business is Show Business, I wrote that the purpose of any business, the purpose of what you're helping your customers do is to properly create experiences so compelling to your customers that their loyalty becomes assured. And that's, I mean, these days, I think the book, All Business Show, Show Business, was kind of being unique and delivering the ultimate customer experience. So I think it's kind of changed focus a little bit because now everybody is a YouTube star or wants to be a YouTube star. My nephew uh, started a, his own podcast from college wanting to be known. Yeah. So the, there, there's been someone saying like one of the deadliest fears is the fear of public speaking. Um, do people get over that when it's just facing a green light on their computer? I, I, I think so. You know, I've always, first of all, Bruce, I've always found that to be kind of uh, ironic that uh, you'd rather be the person in the casket than the one delivering the eulogy. Somehow that seems to be a little backwards to me. I, I think I'd rather be giving the eulogy anytime than the one in the casket. But, but uh, you know, it, it, it's so interesting to me in that, um, you know, we, we, we see a lot of things of comments on social media that you know that those people would never say face to face. And I, 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 I've called that keyboard courage, right? You know, if you're banging away on the keyboard, you'll say things that you might not say otherwise. And I, I think we're seeing the same thing true to some degree with a camera. I, you know, I'm old enough to remember when PageMaker came out on the Macintosh and all of a sudden everybody was doing a newsletter. And while the quality of newsletters improved, it also meant there was a plethora of newsletters that, that you wouldn't want to spend your time reading. So the ability to access the technology doesn't mean that you're going to produce interesting content. And I, I, I think you're exactly right in that everybody wants to now be on camera. Everybody wants to be a YouTube star. Everybody wants to have you know a gazillion followers on Instagram. But... It, it gets back to, are you creating content and information that is distinctive enough that people are going to want to respond to that and apply that and, and get engaged with that? And, and that is, is a monumental challenge. It's always been from the time of writers, you know, from, from the dawn of time to uh, newspaper columnists, to television commentators, to, to now those of us that are they're here on YouTube. Yeah, what's the saying? Don't pick a fight with someone who buys ink by the gallon. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> and and now, you know, it, isn't it interesting? Now it is, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't want to, uh, you know, pick a fight with somebody that buys bandwidth like Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> you know? I mean, it, it's the same principle. It's just the tools that get us there have, yep. have been altered a bit. Yeah, so we have one guest here um, calling it Hollywood, Indiana. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. You know, Brian, I don't think they've ever really thought of Crothersville as being Hollywood, Indiana, but uh, that's, that's yep. pretty wild. Yeah, it, it is amazing when you think of how many people, you know, uh, just in that you know little area, uh, small, you know, went on to do such uh, such incredible things. I, I, I don't know why. I don't know what was in the water at that particular time. But, you know, I, but again, if you, if you think about what Letterman has done, if you think about what Mellencamp has done, if you think about what all of those folks have done, they've, they've captured the ability to tell a story. They have mm -hmm. captured, whether it's through song or whether it's through comedy, uh, th they have found a unique way to capture the ability to connect. And those same principles, those same qualities, I think apply to small business just as much as they apply to, to, to music or broadcasting. So when I Googled you doing some research on this for this oh. interview, um, <laughs> I pulled up this platform um, here, which kind of gives an outline of who you are. Oh, and right. then there's, there's this one book you wrote before your first book. And if you highlight here, it says Scott McCain, film actor. <laughs> 
yeah, yeah. From both movies I was in, but particularly Strasik, yeah. <laughs> so actually, I found something. Oh, you're kidding me. Oh, my so, gosh. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up here. So again, being a, an actor, how much of that is um, necessary to being kind of like a on, on, on camera person? So oh. here is... Look at this glass. Here's a younger Scott McCain. Oh, <laughs> oh and, and also we can talk about this as well as customer service because this guy, he has he has the customer in mind. He's trying. The problem we're having with the payments, the filling of the agreement, um, it's out of our hands, and I've been asked to come out and let you know that uh, we're going to be forced to repossess your mobile home. To absolve you of any responsibility uh, in a loan, uh, as a matter of formality, we need you to, to sign sign this paper. Um, if you would please, sir. So, wow. so that was your acting debut. Yeah, kind of, kind of the finale too. You know, I, I I did get a couple offers to to do additional acting, but I, I I I'm I am so glad that I had the chance and the opportunity and the privilege to do that. And I had not a whole lot of desire to do it again. <laughs> I mean, uh, it, 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 Roger Ebert named that as one of the 50 great movies in the history of cinema, which is just incredible, crazy. But uh, there's some neat stories about that. But, you know, I mean, one, one of the things I realized about acting uh, is that somebody told you what to say, Somebody told you how to say it. You were going to do it again and again and again until you said it exactly like they wanted you to. You had no control over your character or anything like that. And Bruce, I got to be honest, I'm, I'm too entrepreneurial <laughs> for that. You know, I mean, uh, I, I enjoyed speaking so much because I wrote the script. I, for better or worse, kind of directed the performance. So I, I was responsible for the output. And I, I came to realize I was very fortunate because Werner Herzog, the director, is is now recognized as one of the greatest of all time. Uh, but, you know, I, I realized I was totally in his hands. You could give a great performance and still end up in a horrible, horrible movie. Yeah, and That's what I love about being an entrepreneur. And I, I, I would assume that you do as well, is that we have so much more control uh, in, in a smaller business. Not 100% control. Nobody ever does. But but uh, I, I, I guess I, I don't. I'm so entrepreneurial. I want my hands on the wheel a little more than what acting would have provided. Yeah. In one year I worked on the, one of the movies that was voted the worst movie of the year. One of the best movies of the year in the same year. Oh, no kidding. What were they? Do you mind sharing? Or did this sure. It was witless protection <laughs> with, with Larry, the cable guy uh -huh. and dark Knight. Oh, wow. Oh my goodness. Holy so, cow. And so, uh, what? They were both filmed in Chicago at the same time. And this is your show. I'm not supposed to be asking the questions, but how, how did it feel working in the, the Larry the Cable Guy comedy as opposed to a Christopher Nolan film where he is, you know, so highly regarded and highly respected? I enjoyed the experience on Larry the Cable Guy better. Really? <laughs> because yeah. it was a smaller crew. Yeah. It was more relaxed. Um, you got to talk to all the uh, the. the and we actually were working on the behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it was uh, uh, Stomeyer, I forgot I forgot what his name, uh, from Fargo. Oh, yeah, Jason Stromeyer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, or Peter Stromeyer. Yeah. yeah Pete, so, yeah, so Peter was the bad guy in the movie. Yeah. You know, the, oh, he's the phenomenal guy. In Fargo. Was a hero. Oh, so, wow. it, was a really, it was a fun movie. It was small. Um, I got connected with the DP. We actually... Uh, did a show with him a few years years later when he created his own movie, but uh, how cool! But wow. all business all business is show business. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you think about it, uh, and and part of part of the background is that uh, after that movie, when it came out, then it made news in and Crothersville is uh, eh, thirty miles north of Louisville, Kentucky. So Louisville television and it, we, we got both Indianapolis television and Louisville television where, where we were, but Louisville was closer to us than Indianapolis. And so uh, the CBS affiliate in uh, Louisville asked to do an interview, you know, how in the world does a guy from Crothersville end up in a German film? And 
So after I, I was a guest on the show, the news director stopped me as I was coming out of the studio and said, hey, we got this movie coming out this weekend. And by the time we get the, the syndicated reviews, everybody's going to see, you know, a gazillion reviews. Would you be interested? We'll, we'll go see, go see the movie tonight. And then when you come out of the film, we'll, when you come out of the theater, we'll have a camera crew there and then we'll just do a live shot. And you tell us what you think of the movie. And that way we'll get a leg up on the competition. Man, it sounded cool. So I went to see the empire strikes back. And when I walked out of the, thing there was a camera crew there and we did a live shot and people liked it evidently and so i became a movie reviewer every you know every week i'd review a couple of movies on the on the local news well just dumb luck there's no way you can plan this obviously the big event in louisville is the kentucky derby there was an executive there from westinghouse broadcasting who's in his hotel room flips on the television and there i am doing a movie review saying don't spend the money for the movie, wait until it comes out on video. It'll be cheaper and you won't have to hire a babysitter. Well, evidently nobody had said that before. The, at least no one this guy heard it said before. And so this was for Empire Strikes Back? No, no, this was for a later movie. Empire Strikes Back okay. the very first one. But later, you know, another, okay. another movie you know, a couple years later I was reviewing. So uh, they syndicated me. And so I was, I was on 80 television stations in the U.S. and Canada and Australia doing entertainment commentary. So it was the greatest side hustle, you know, part-time gig in the world. I, I, I would build my speaking business during the week and, and, and I would, you know, fly to New York or LA every weekend and see a movie and interview the stars of the movie. And, and, and that's where the whole concept came about was that I, as I was watching what folks like you were doing in the production and, and the development of a film, I, I realized there were things that business people needed to know. You know, I, I, I'd go to these business corporate events during the week and I'd go, wow, you know, the experience that a movie creates for the audience is exactly the kind of feeling that you want your customers to have. I mean, the, the reason Titanic became the number one film of all time at that point is that not only did people go see it, they went back to the theater to see it a second time. And, then, and when they went back, they brought their friends. Mm -hmm. well, what business doesn't want that? Your customers come back for more. And when they come back and they refer you and, and bring others. So that was the essential concept of all businesses show business. It, and and you, you've mentioned kindly that the ultimate customer experience, that's where that came from. Because at that time, you know, we were barely talking about customer service, much less the customer experience, which is how we got the trademark on the term because nobody was talking about it. And it, it, it seems to me that that is still the case to this very day is that show business succeeds when it creates this compelling emotional experience. And, and every business should desire that, that, that you, you connect with your customers at such a, a level they want to repeat and refer the business. Yep. And as far as uh, catching up on some of our comments uh, that we've gotten here, it is about the content. Thank you, Jody. So, so quality, uh, and then uh, perform the platform doesn't e equal quality. So you need uh, to have good quality right. content. And then he loves the the the, the, <laughs> <laughs> the public speaking comment. Yeah. Thank you, Phil. I appreciate that. I have always found that so, you know, people are more afraid of speaking than of dying. Really? I mean, I'd much rather be doing the eulogy. So. I mean, usually, I'm usually the guy behind the camera. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then I, I am also an, uh, an entrepreneur, or no, uh, can't even say that, introvert. So then um, I fo I'm forcing myself, you know, I, I've taken that, that disc test. Yeah. At, uh, the DISC, right. and I and that my got the lower score on influencer. The influencer is the outgoing, friendly type, and so I'm forcing myself to become an outgoing, friendly type by doing stuff like this. I'm glad you are. You it, and again, I mean that's that's one of the. I, I, I think about with all that's going on in the world right now. The the the, the wonderful aspect of that. I know a lot of us are are Zoom meeting down and all of mm -hmm. that. Gosh, where would we be without it? I mean, without this ability to talk and to communicate, without this ability to share ideas, uh, it's 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 just amazing. And then we have some career advice from Brian. That's a great question, uh, Brian. And and you know, I was so fortunate because part of how I got started 
so many years ago was through a student organization that gave me the chance to get in, you know, for lack of a better term, to get in the reps, you know, I mean, to, to do the repetition that it took to build the fundamental school, the fundamental skills of speaking. So if you are starting early, I always recommend a group like Toastmasters where you can learn the basics. I mean, you've got to go somewhere to learn the basics of the craft, just as an actor would go to an acting school and an acting coach. Speakers need to go somewhere where they can practice and, and learn the craft. Now, assuming that, and it's a big assumption, but assuming, you know, those basic skills, I, I always encourage people to start speaking for free. I literally gave 1,000 free speeches before I got paid. And nobody wants to hear that. You know, I mean, nobody wants to, but, but it's, it's the case. It, it, you, you've got to be so good that people are willing to refer you. And when people start asking you, what's your fee or what's your honorarium, then that's when you can start asking for one. But the second thing is, Think about what groups are a natural fit for you. For me, growing up in a small town and growing up on a farm, you know, every county in Indiana, there's 92 counties in Indiana. Each one of them had a county farm bureau annual meeting. Each of those counties had a soil and water conservation uh, banquet annual meeting. Uh, they all had what at that time were called production credit associations. Those don't exist anymore, but those were cooperatives that made short-term loans to farmers by law as a cooperative they were required to have an annual meeting so there were three meetings in each county that's almost 300 meetings in my state that were looking for a speaker and at that time they would pay a couple hundred bucks 250 bucks now of course you know we're, we're talking about the early 1980s but but it, it i marketed to those and, and then from those, then we marketed to the state, you know, I do enough of the county meetings that I'd say to the state, Hey, look, look here. And then, and then I went to the state's surroundings. So Kentucky, Ohio, Illinois, Michigan, right. And I would market to those groups and I just kept expanding that. Well, part of what happened then was that people who were involved, you know, and at, at one of those agricultural firms then went to a regular bank. So then they'd have me come speak at that bank. And then I marketed the Indiana Bankers Association and the Kentucky Bankers. It, and so you, you just treat it, you, you grow it organically. Now, please understand, and I, I know that, that, that you know this, Brian, but I mean, this is, this is a very challenging time to launch a speaking business because we can't have meetings. <laughs> you know I mean, I'm dying to get up in front of a live group again because that hasn't happened since March. But, but, that is part of how you grow that. The, the other thing I would encourage you is to create unique content. Because again, it gets back to what was said earlier. It's all about the content. You know, when one of the challenges that I faced early on in my speaking business was um, I went through a, a personal tragedy and, and it took me out of the business for a while. So when I jumped back in, you know, it, it just felt like everything had passed me by. So, so I asked speakers bureaus, uh, when you recommend me, what do you say? And their answer was, you know, a good speaker and a nice guy. Well, that's about as generic as it gets. You know, that's that's why I started studying how to be distinctive because I, I had to to save my own business. So, you know, there's a lot of really great speakers out there. Uh, just as we Bruce and I were talking about show business earlier, there's a lot of really great actors, a lot of really great performers. So there has to be something about you and that's true for any entrepreneur in any business. There has to be something about you that that attracts people to want to work with you and that attracts people to want to hire you to put you in front of their group. So it's it's that mix of having the skill to deliver in this unique profession, but having the unique content that also inspires people to, to want to hear you. And, and Bruce, I think that's true of any business is that you know, in, in recorded history, no customer has ever said, I love doing business with those guys. They're exactly like everybody else. Yeah, you know, if, you're, if you're exactly like everybody else, then there's no compelling reason that you know, they love doing business with you. You're, you're a commodity. I, I wouldn't have proposed to my wife saying, honey, will you marry me? You're exactly like every other woman I've ever dated. <laughs> so, so we have to find something that is unique. We've got to find something that is distinctive 
about what we do, whether it's speaking or selling widgets or whatever it might be, that will attract customers to want to do business with us for the future. So I'm getting some offers here. Um, someone who can help me out on being less of an introvert. Ah, great. And then, and then it looks like he actually wants to pay me to do the training, I think. <laughs> So he's he's actually so basically like someone coming up to, up to you. So, okay, Scott, I can I like to pay you to uh, to teach you how to do something or drive a car, drive 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 Indianapolis or something. Oh like yeah, that. yeah. Uh, so I'm, anyway, I'm... Um, we need to wrap this up a little bit. I know sure. you've got an appointment uh, coming up. Uh, these you are actually on kind of on the the speaking circuit again to some extent. Well, yeah, we, we have a program coming up called the Ultimate Business Summit, and it is uh, the it is the last time, in fact, we're going to do this program. Larry Wingate, Randy Pennington, and I have, uh, the, the whole plan was to do it for five years, so this is, this is the fifth year, and the Ultimate Business Summit. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, it's August 13th and 14th. We are virtual this year with the Ultimate Business Summit, and the whole goal this year is to talk about how you make more money in changing times. Uh, and, and, thank you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that, Bruce. By the way, I, I, I want to mention we, we have a special offer for those of you that are watching right now. Um, if you will enter the coupon code Scott. Oh, get, is, it, is it case sensitive? No, it is not. Just just enter Scott as as the coupon code. And if if you sign up for a regular ticket, you get $100 off. If you sign up for a VIP ticket, you get $100 off. So it's one hundred dollars off, so it's under a hundred dollars to attend the Ultimate Business Summit with the coupon code. So just enter the coupon code Scott, and you get a hundred dollars off. Uh, it's it's something that I'm doing in, in, in appreciation, Bruce, for you having me here today. But is it I, only I, for a couple more days? We only it was like till like Wednesday or Thursday of this week. Yeah, I, I think it's through Friday, through the end of the week. Uh, okay, that the, the code will work. And and you know, Bruce, we. We've done this every year in person for entrepreneurs. We'll, we've had entrepreneurs fly from, from the United Kingdom and from Australia to attend. The results that they have reported, just, man, it, it, it's, it's one of the greatest things I have a privilege to be a part of, knowing, you know, my, my family owned the one grocery store in Crothersville. And I, I think about, you know, I, I've had the privilege of speaking to big corporations, you know, Apple and Cisco and SAP and, and Porsche and on and on and on. And I think, where would my dad have gone to get this kind of information for his little business? And Larry grew up as I did, and Randy grew up as I did as well, you know, in, in Oklahoma and Texas, respectively. And, and you know, we, th that's part of our mission, and that's part of our, our, was our plan for this, is how do we take the information that, that corporations are paying so much for and, and really deliver it to the front line to entrepreneurs like our parents were? So that's that's the mission of this. That's the goal of this. And and if folks watching would like to be a part of that, you know, if they'll just enter that code, that'll help make it happen. And and I I just know from the experience that other entrepreneurs have had, there's so much valuable information there for them. Excellent. Well, it's, it's great been great having you. Um, I've got a call to action as well. Those who are watching, um, if you want to watch more of this fantastic type interviews, the best interview ever, right? Absolutely. Are you ready for the best interview of your life? Absolutely. <laughs> there you go. And again, um, Scott's got some great books as well. Um, you can check out his website, which is scottmccain.com. And uh, please subscribe and follow uh, us on both YouTube and Facebook. And great. Um, any last words? Any last suggestions? Oh, Bruce, I, I just thanks. And, and by the way, for free resources, we've got a website called distinctionnation.com. Uh, there's nothing on there to buy. It is a free resource to help you stand out as, as an entrepreneur. So distinctionnation.com. It's absolutely free. Would love to see you at the Ultimate Business Summit, but most importantly, Bruce, seven years, man. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's it's really been a privilege to be a yeah, part this of This is, again, this is our first face-to-face -face in seven years. Everything yeah. else has been uh, through typing, and so I think I, I've been following you more than you've been following me, but uh, we've been You've been great interaction. Yeah. Uh, what was that one line? I was watching you last Sunday. There's a fine line between following and stalking. <laughs> At least that's what the judge told me. <laughs> yeah, my great friend uh, George Campbell said there's there's a, a fine line between persistence and stalking. At least that's what the, 
the judge told me that I've always loved that line. I think that's so funny, but yeah, I've, I've Bruce, you've been very persistent in following me, and I, I hope I've reciprocated as well. And, and man, I tell you, it's just been such a, a thrill to be with you today. I, I really appreciate that. The folks that were kind enough to comment and, and all of that, my goodness, thank you for that. I, I really appreciate it. You, you've got a lot of folks uh, who, uh, who have just been so kind with us. Thank you very much. Great. Well, thank you again. And I shall see you every day, to, uh, Monday through, actually every day, pretty much, 2 o'clock Central. Uh, noontime Pacific, you've got your own show. Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, it's Daily Distinction, and it's just a live stream uh, where we talk. Sometimes we have guests. Sometimes we, you know, I just, whatever's on, on my heart, on my mind, we talk about that uh, uh, every day at uh, 2 o'clock Central, noon, noon Pacific. Yeah, so if you can't get enough of Scott here, follow him <laughs> there. He, he's got book, uh, at least 10 more books in the content he's produced online. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. Thank you, Bruce. Great. Thank you much. And I will let you go. So again, follow us uh, and have a good day.